is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And on this show, we're always looking to bring you people who can bring you new insights that you can take back time, that you can be smarter in the way that you go about your day to day. And today I'm super excited to have Sarah Oliveri with me. She is going to do just that. She is going to give us some tips on how to take back time in our day. She says, have you ever seen Casino Royale? The moment when Vespa slides in elegantly opposite of James, all charming, smile, razor sharp wit, and mighty brain power. She says, I'm the money. My next guest, she has likened to Vespa. One of her clients said that anyway. And not just because she's charming and beautiful and brainy, but because the bold statement, I'm the money, was, as it turned out to be, right on the money. Anyway, she's a former director of three non-for-profits and a founder of five for-profit businesses. So she understands deeply the challenges and complexities that are facing organizations today. And she's created a framework called the Impact Method, which can help you to simplify operations, build aligned teams and make a bigger impact without getting overwhelmed and burning out. And every single one of you wants to hear more about that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Sarah, welcome to the show. Penny, thank you so much for having me here and having such a great topic. Now more than ever, as we're in this sort of hustle culture and we're at the same time, we're hustling, but we're more distracted than ever. It's like all a bunch of paradoxes that are working for us and against us at the same time. It's an age-old topic, and here we are to talk about how we can make the most of our time. Why is this a topic that is near and dear to your heart? Two reasons. I heard this saying once, which totally changed my life completely. And it was so simple. You can make up for lost money, but you can't make up for lost time. And I learned that phrase right when I had a son who was about to turn three, And I was realizing that I needed to leave my marriage. And I started this journey in my life that was so intentional. And it was all about having my time. Because here I was at the time, I was in my mid-30s. And I wasn't old, but I wasn't young anymore. That was very much true for me. I could feel it in every way that I had wasted a lot of time. I really wanted the rest of my life to be about being time rich and enjoying every moment of my life. Time rich with a three-year-old. We'll talk about that another time. How does one become time rich? Because you can't make it. There's no more of it. It's a fixed entity. So how do you become time rich? Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day as I was comparing my income goals from a number of years ago and reflecting that over time, my income goals have really been replaced by time goals. I feel like now in my life, I am time rich because I've designed a business using a lot of the principles that we might talk about today or that you've heard on previous episodes of your podcast to create a business that doesn't take a lot of time to run. And I spend a lot of time with my son for fun, but also for needs. He's got some special needs. And so there's a lot that I have to put in there. And I spend a lot of time. I race sailboats with my dad, who's 76. So I spend a lot of time on the boat and doing boat things. And when I say I'm busy, this summer I had to, at the end of the summer, I had to move from a three-day work week to a four-day work week. Not the kind of busy that other people I think have gotten used to. And I really just created this life that's around maximizing just having the free time, which I fill up with things that I want to be doing. So I think it's not so much like free time, but making sure that every moment you're doing something that you really enjoy. That matters to you. Yeah. Yeah. I really love what you said about instead of money goals, you've got time goals. I wanted to repeat that because that's rich. That's very interesting to think about because very often we're focused on the wrong things. Our money goals take us more and more away from the things that matter most, which we can only accomplish with our time goals. We think it's the money, but it's 
really the time. So I really love that. Thank you so much. That drop the mic. We're done here. <laughs> Podcast over. Podcast. Your we can goes. totally do it. If people just take a moment to let that sink in and think about, that's really powerful. And I'll bet there's a bunch of people who say, yeah, but I'm not an entrepreneur. There's not only entrepreneurs that are listening to this and they can say, well, my time is not my own. What would you say to them? It is your time and it's your life. And I would think very carefully about, I'd make yourself a list. What are the things that you want to do? You may love your job. You might just need to acknowledge that you're actually happy spending your time, but it's your choice to have the job that you have to a certain degree. And maybe you'll make a change. I made drastic changes, leaving my husband with a young child and I had to move a bunch and I had to close a failing business while starting another business. Certainly as a parent, it's not that I have choice over how I use all my time. My son needs me. I just have to do it. But I think it's about the intention. The way I became literally on paper focused on this is very great. Two things happened at the same time. I was in divorce mediation and we had homework that said, write out your ideal parenting schedule. How would you like to share which days? And so I took that schedule and I said, okay, what if I reverse engineer this? How many hours do I have left to work? If I have spent all the time with my son that I'm proposing here. And it was like 28 and a half hours one week and 32 hours the next week. And so then I said, okay, how much money do I need to live off of? And I said, how can I make that much money in that much time. At that point, you're like whether or not you've chosen, it didn't matter that I had chosen to be an entrepreneur. You can think about that question and reevaluate how you're making money and how you're spending time. The surprise thing that I didn't know then that I know now is I would reach a period where right now working 28 and a half hours a week, which sounded like so little back then, sounds like so much right now. I've just come out of a period of working 10 to 12 hours a week. And that was a little tight, make enough money. But boy, are you time rich when you work that little. I think it's really about making the choice that's right for you, but crunching the numbers a little too. I would just want to make a comment about that as well for people who have full-time jobs. That's totally okay. It doesn't mean that you can't still create time goals is because what about from from five to nine? Okay, that's what you're doing from nine to five. What about from five to nine or five to 12 or whatever the time frame is? What you said is about just being much more intentional. We live in an age of distraction, of always on the go. And I think that we're just more in automatic mode than we are in intentional mode. That yeah. means slow down, pay attention, to be more purposeful then we have to set those goals. We have to say, okay, this is how I want to spend my time. I'm thinking that we're all busy in this household too. My kids are teenagers now. It's like, okay, quality time mm-hmm. may not be the amount of time that I can have 10 hours a week with them. That's just not going to happen with their jobs and all the conflicting schedules. But what about really purposeful, intentional time? So we'll schedule a date to really spend some time together. They have date night for couples. Why not date nights with your kids or whenever that might be during the day. I just want to come back to what you said about being intentional. So time goals to me would be about being intentional. And you can do that no matter what your schedule is. You said you have a child with special needs. There's all different things that are people, projects, priorities vying for our attention. We just have to slow down. And I'm going to come back to that point that you made and definitely think about that from in terms of the time goals is your time buckets. That's how we create balance. And maybe we'll come and ask you that question about balance. But sometimes people think it balances is that it's an equal amount of time at work and at home or an equal amount of time in each area of your life. But I think what we're really looking for and when we say balance is fulfillment, that we're focusing some of our time in those areas that matter most and focusing on the things that matter most in those areas so that we can feel fulfilled, so we can feel we're making progress or deepening our relationships. What do you think of that whole concept of balance? Yeah, I don't think balance is really the right word. I'm completely in agreement with you. It's about enjoyment. And I think all of us probably are, to one degree or another, are told there are things we should do or that we have to do. And most of them we don't. I say I work with nonprofit CEOs. They tend to be overwhelmed and busy. And the number one thing about getting more time back is don't overload your plate. Choose how you're going to use your time. 
And we can't do that. And I think in our personal lives, we have to recognize, are we doing this just because we're following somebody else's rules? Or is it what we really want to do? I like to have a clean kitchen, but I'd rather have sometimes go sailing than have a clean kitchen. I'll just be like, whatever, I'll have a dirty kitchen because I'm doing something even more fun. I'm right. in cleaning my kitchen or sometimes my I'm a single mom. Sometimes my laundry is all over the place. Eventually I need to clean up my house because I like to have a clean house. But when I clean, it's for my own peace of mind, not because I feel like I have to follow somebody else's rule. And I often ask myself that question. What do I really want to be doing with my time right now? Right. And I try to let go of those things that maybe your mother told you or your, somebody made a comment once and you're doing it for somebody else's priorities and not your own. And I encourage people just to not do those things unless, of course, they really affect somebody, but try to do what is fulfilling for you and your family. How do you define productivity and why? Oh, I don't know that I've ever tried to really define productivity. That's a good question. I am very outcomes oriented. I think it's really important to remember that when we're thinking about setting goals, the goals we have that are for things that we're not in control over. I'd like my son to be happy, but I can't actually control that directly. I'd like my clients to be successful, but I can't control that directly. So that's one type of goal. That's a nice kind of visioning thing to set. But then there's the other type of goal. Like, what are you going to do about it? What do you have control over? Maybe I'm going to do a fun activity with my son. He just learned skiing. I'm planning. It's almost the end of the season. I want to pull him out of school one day so he can get an extra day to learn skiing and let all that new knowledge sink in and all those good feelings come. That I can take him skiing and maybe that will make him happy. I'm pretty sure it will, but that's the thing that I have control over. So when I think about being productive, measuring both those things, am I doing the things that I have control over or am I just not doing them, right? Because sometimes we just don't get to those things. We're not productive. And then I'm also evaluating when I do take action, is that action having the results that I want? And if it's not having the results, then I need to change what I'm doing and I need to reevaluate. I had that personal experience recently. My son has a lot of anxiety and he's 10 and he wanted to go skateboarding. And so I took him to the skate park. It's half an hour away. You have to go over a bridge and we get there and he refuses to get out of the car. He won't because there's like other kids in the state, in the skate park. Right. And for a moment, I have that very selfish moment. Oh my God, we drove all the way here. I left work early. I stopped all these other things that I wanted to do because I wanted to give you this opportunity. You won't even get out of the car. And then we started to drive home. He just wouldn't. I figured I'd pretend to work for 10 minutes and see if he would get out, but he didn't. And then we start to drive home and I'm being like, I start to tell him like how I'm feeling without trying to be angry at him. But I feel like I tried really hard to give you something, but that you didn't try as hard. I didn't expect him to make any many results, but I just felt like he didn't try as hard. And then he starts to say, I want to try again. I want to go back. And for a moment, I was angry and I didn't want to drive back. And then I said, what's the thing you're really trying to achieve here, Sarah? I said, what I'm really trying is to give him an opportunity to overcome a fear. And that's what's happening right now. And yeah, did I spend more time driving back and forth than I planned on? Yes. But the total time, not that much more. And if I just drive us home, then I didn't even begin to get the thing that I want. And if I turn around and take a step over the bridge, and neither did he. But Mm -hmm. if I turn around and just let go of my anger about the frustrating experience, then he can have this opportunity to try something that's a little bit hard for him. And I can have what I really wanted out of the situation, which was to give him that opportunity. So did he get out of the car? He got out of the car. He stood by the skate park until the sun went down and everybody left. And then he got on his skateboard. He did a few tricks. He had some big smiles and we both went home and had sushi. Yeah. I forgot how we got into that, but Comes. You have to think about what is the result you really want. And you have to be prepared sometimes yes. to check your emotions that might be coming from some other thing. It's a just another distraction. Only maybe our phones and things like that is distractions. But absolutely, that other noise, our emotions that get in the way that sabotage us are also important distractions to be aware of for sure. Yeah. No, I love that. Let's take a pivot into your framework because we only have a limited time together. 
with people's limited attention span, just give us a high level overview of understanding this framework that you have. Yeah, it's designed for nonprofits, but can be used by any business. But nonprofits are more complex as businesses than for profits. It's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. There's lots of people, there's very little money, and there's so much to do. And the goals are just the biggest goals curing cancer, solving hunger. I needed a way, a simple set of rules to help nonprofits run better, not just rules, but ways of operating. And what the core of this framework has at it is there are three things you need to focus on if you're trying to manage this level of complexity in any business. And one is you have to be attending to your capacity. You have to be expanding your capacity. And big surprise, it's not about having more money. It's about having the right people working together in an aligned way. That's Mm -hmm. dramatically will increase your capacity. You have to have a continuous process for improvement. You have to have a way of always getting better, evaluating what's working, what's not, and pushing yourself forward. And the third thing you need is a truly actionable strategy. When you're on your own deciding things, you don't necessarily need a written strategy. But when you start to try to get people working together, you really needed a strategy if you don't want to waste a ton of time and feel like you're hurting cats. So you need not just... And the strategy has to have goals, both the types we've talked about. It has to be written and it has to have some sort of work plan attached to it. If you just have goals and you didn't turn it into, what am I going to do today? Or you need that action plan. You need that. And I think so much about having great actionable strategy is you have periods where you look up at the big picture and you look all around and then you stick your head in the sand and you just work what you know is the right to-do list because you really focused on making a really good to-do list for a certain amount of time and you know you're going to review it. But if you spend too much time looking at the big picture, distracted, you'll get lost. And if you spend too much time with your head in the sand, then you won't know where you are either. You need to know the appropriate amount of zoom in and zoom out and rinse and repeat with that. Yeah. And I'll tell you what we found as far as that right amount for being really complex is look at your strategy every two months, reassess your work plan every two weeks, and then just have a daily plan where you're just just double checking that you're on track with what you're supposed to do that day. But really looking to every two weeks, you kind of like a strategic cycle and a tactical cycle and your today to-do list. I love that. Thank you for adding that in because I think that really puts some context for people to understand what is the right amount. So that's great. Would you say that amount is just for non for profit or would you say in general with the speed of change that is appropriate for today's market across the board? Everybody. I think the two months as opposed to quarterly is because that's how our brain works, right? You can imagine eight weeks a lot more easily than you can three months. You can hold an eight week plan in your head. But I tried working quarterly. And just for most people, if you work quarterly, that last month is just a little fuzzy. You're like, what was my plan again three months ago? And a lot changes. And I was going to say at the speed of change, I would say that maximum two months, the things are changing so fast. We need to be adaptable, right? To be able to shift and pivot as necessary. So I really love that it's the two months and not the quarter. Love it. Yeah. And I love that you said maximum. And I teach my clients two months at least. But if some dramatic thing happens or something suddenly changes, you can go back to your strategic, you can restart a new cycle anytime you need to, anytime that the sand shifted suddenly. Definitely. And we have to be aware, just not to go into a tangent, but I just saw a presentation on the incredible amount of speed of change. And I don't remember the statistics, but it was shocking. With AI stuff coming right now, I think we're about to be in a very accelerated moment. And I guess like for the next year and a half, I think the combination of the great resignation and people shifting jobs with, I feel like the AI chat GPT stuff that's coming in is very much, it's like the camera but coming into the art world. It's going to change the landscape. And there's some oh, sure it already has. Adjusting. There's so many. Yeah. I've just heard today some of the applications of ChatGPT that I hadn't even considered. It's happening. It's here and uh, the rate of change is only going to speed up as this becomes a general adoption. We're talking about it, but we're still early adopters. There's so many people, they're hearing it for the first time or don't even know what it is. Yeah. Put your seatbelt on, people. Woohoo! <laughs> here we go. 
So, but I think so, just have to, because we're in such a special moment, because some people are scared of the AI stuff. Sure. And I think it's just going to emphasize the importance of critical thinking, which mm-hmm. AI is never going to do. And what do we need to do critical thinking? We need to be able to focus. We need to be able to decide what's important. All of the things that are important about time management are things that we all need even more than we ever did. Yeah, it's going to bring out new skills. I don't think there's anything to be, I know people are nervous and afraid because we're not good with change, but with every change comes opportunity. We can choose to focus on what sucks, what's missing and what we're losing, or we can choose to focus on the opportunities, the possibilities, and where things could go from here. And I think like with every change, there's challenge, but we we come up with so many other cool things and people tend to be better off. We are better off today than we were a hundred years ago. So we have to look at it like that is there are momentary challenges to get used to adopt, to think differently. And that's all part of us growing and learning. That's what we're here for. That's right. And I have to say full circle back to my own time management. I've been thinking about how can I, where am I going to free up some time so that I can play with these new tools so that I can enjoy whatever opportunity they have to give me. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm sure there's one. Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually essential, especially for entrepreneurs. And I would say in any business to stay on pace or even to be competitive is you must free up time. In order to be playing with these technologies and thinking about how they're changing our future. Because if you're not thinking about that now and how you can use this to create a competitive advantage or stay competitive in the marketplace, you're going to be shut down much sooner than you think. That's just something to think about is it's not, I should do this. It's an absolute, you must do this. Yeah. And it can be fun. Absolutely. Because you're proactive and your time will turn into opportunities that way. And it's the joy of life. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So I'm having fun with it anyway. Where can people find out more information about you and your programs and how you approach things? Sure, pivotground.com. That's the best place. You'll find information about my programs. You can look for me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places, and you'll find me. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Sarah. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for being here because I think there were a lot of golden nuggets in here. First of all, I want you to think about your time goals. Take a few moments and really think about where are you spending your time today and where do you want to be spending your time? Where's the most important areas that are going to bring you joy, that are going to bring you more fulfillment and growth in your life and really make a difference for you, right? And be purposeful about those time goals, setting those time goals. That was a big thing that came out of the beginning. So many things. We talked about the framework, about understanding your capacity and opening up capacity, creating a process for impact, and also making sure that you're planning your strategy and then those cycles to stay on top of. Wow. Listen to it again. Maybe you need to listen to it again. But the important thing is that you're here, you're taking away these tips and notes, and you're also going to be prepared for the future. That's how you're going to take back time is you're going to be proactive and you're going to be purposeful. And that's what we talked about today with a number of tips that are going to help you stay competitive in the future and that are going to bring you more joy and fulfillment in your futures. My name is Penny Zanker and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.